Hello again, and happy Bee Saturday. I'm Ryan McElhaney with Mac Bee Buzzin, and this is what I'm going to call part two in our Split Nerves series. Yeah! <laughs> time splitting hives you put so much time and energy into making sure your hives succeed and the last thing you want to do is set them back in any way or possibly injure or kill one right but nonetheless responsible beekeepers have to split our hives to make sure that our bees don't decide to migrate somewhere else and today the path that I'm choosing to go is what is known as the reverse Doolittle method and so I am going to go through every frame of the hive that you see right there. Those are three boxes, and it is the very end of March, about to start April. I know I need to split it because there's so many bees in there. Uh, that third box up there is just so that they can babysit some honey that I took out of the freezer. But now I know that I've got to give them space. That means that one of the boxes is gonna to have to make a new queen, and ideally, it's gonna be the parent hive right there with the reverse two little method. We're gonna go through each frame in our parent hive. Any frames that are open brood, we're gonna place in the new hive here. Then any frames that we find that have capped brood, we're gonna give a little bit of a shake over this, just enough to make sure that our queen is not still on the frame. And those capped brood cells go back into the parent hive so that when we're done, we have a high probability that the queen is in this box, even though we didn't have to specifically locate her. Maybe we'll get lucky and we will along the way. But she'll have a lot of nurse bees to take care of things, take care of her as she lays in this hive. And the uh, open brood will eventually be capped and it will emerge and then they'll actually have forager bees. But in the immediate, it's going to take a few days for them to have foragers, so we have to make sure we give them food to start. The other one is going to be queenless on purpose. So we have to leave some eggs in there, some young larvae in there, so that they can make a new queen. We want them to have a chance of succeeding, so they'll also still have to have food. But they're gonna be queenless for probably about a month. Um, they'll produce a new queen. We'll check on it next week. So you're going along for the ride with me. I'm a little nervous. Hopefully you are too. We'll see how it goes. is that top box is mostly honey. When I checked it last week, the queen wasn't laying in the top box, which she shouldn't be. So I think I'm gonna save that box till last. I'm just gonna set it off to the side, get it out of the way so that I can take care of the most pressing part first, which is making sure that this box has the brood and hopefully the queen. The queen should not be in that top box. Um, and then we'll put the honey back on after, which with whichever one we think is actually gonna be the strongest hive. Just, um, just to make sure that they both have resources, we'll make sure that some of those honey frames are in both as well. All right, this is a pretty good honey frame. You can see the honey on this side. It's quite a bit on the other side as well. So this is a good one, I think, for us to keep. And we'll put these on the outside of the box. All right, this one has just a tiny bit of capped brood down at the bottom. But outside of that, you can see some of the yellow and color that's in there, especially on this side. That's bee bread, that's food. We want them to have that to continue to raise the young. So this will be in the second position down here. All right, I'm gonna call this one, I'm gonna call this one a capped brood, just because there's not really a whole lot of young stuff on here. The bees aren't doing a whole lot with it. The capped brood will be good to leave in that original source hive. I don't see my queen, but we do want bees. So now this is a frame I'm eventually gonna wanna cycle out because 
while it's got good capped brood on that one side, I don't know how well it shows on camera, but this, this uh, foundation got warped, so it's kind of pushing out right there. So this, they're not really gonna be able to build comb on that bare spot. So at some point, I'm gonna have to deal with that, take it out, replace it with something else after the brood has a chance to hatch out of this one. There's so much bee bread on this one. Look at all that. Isn't that beautiful? But still no queen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap this one. I think this is a better one to use for this colony. All right, so let me show you what I'm seeing here. Right there, crawling around in the middle right there, that is Queen Patty. That is the first time I have seen her in a while. We're gonna put her in here for safekeeping. Now, the aim of this was not to find her. Like, the method I'm using, theoretically, you don't really need to find the queen. The point is just to give her plenty of young bees to work from, and then put all of the capped brood in the other one to emerge, and they'll make their own as long as you leave them eggs. So, Oh, we've got Queen Patty in this new box. That's good news. This particular hive, I, this is a bee, or the, the frame with the queen in the middle. It's got room for her to lay, but there are no eggs there. She was in the bottom box, but I didn't see eggs or young larvae in the bottom box. There was a decent amount of capped brood, but nothing young. So I'm not sure if I have something to be worried about yet or not. The big question that I have is I need to get into that third box and hope that what she did is move up into that top box, lay some brood, and then travel back down to the bottom. We don't know, fingers crossed, because if she didn't, I'm gonna have to probably steal some open brood from both of these hives, uh, or for both of these hives from one of my other stronger colonies quote unquote stronger. So here's the hoping. of eggs on a fresh piece of comb. Lots of eggs. And I've got young larvae on the other side as well. So I may just be getting into the actual, I think you can see it there, those little white curly things are larvae. Probably won't be able to see the eggs because they look like just teeny tiny little rice things. But this is a full laid up frame. This is what we want to see this right down in here. She's going to be laying. I'm going to give them a few more nurse bees. I know she's in there. I don't want to take all of them. I have to make sure these girls have something to make a new queen from. This one, I'm gonna put 
foot right here so they can see from it. That's my thinking anyway. Because I've got my brood in the middle. If I put this here, now they've got bee bread. I know they've got honey. definitely took a little longer than I anticipated and I definitely have a girl over here who's ticked at me somewhere because I can hear that high-pitched kind of whine. All in all, if there weren't quite as assertive or aggressive toward me as I would have thought, although a few of them are kind of coming back now, some of them are going to start realizing they don't have a queen. So let's re recap real quickly why I did what I did. So I had different types of options for how to split my hives. One of the options that people typically give you is one that I really like the idea of, which is shake all your bees to the bottom box, put on a queen excluder, make sure you have brood, uh, young brood eggs in the second box, and set them, come back later, take the top box off, put it off to its side as a split. What that does though is your new split is queenless and you have to make sure that the population of that box is super strong and so most beekeepers will take that box and move it to a different bee yard. I'm a young beekeeper. I don't have a bee yard set up yet even though there are immediate plans for that. So I've got all of my bees still in the same yard. If that's the case and you split, the tendency is for bees in your new split to return to their original location. That's a problem because I need the new hive to be strong too and I need the original, which is now over here, um, I need the original to make a new queen. And so what's going to happen is I left the capped brood in the parent hive. Capped brood is going to emerge. That means there will be new nurse bees that are in there to take care of any new bees that come. Additionally, what I should see is that top box, I did make sure I left one frame with eggs and young larvae on it. So within the next 24 hours, that hive is going to realize they're queenless and they're going to make emergency queen cells. A few days, so basically by next weekend, I should see that those queen cells are capped. Um, within a couple of weeks, the queen should, the new virgin queen should be marching around inside the hive somewhere. And then hopefully she'll go out and get mated. And so within about a month, a little over a month, I should see a new queen uh, from the, uh, the line of Queen Patty marching around in that hive. And then I effectively have two hives going into honey season. And there's still all of April and a good part of May for them to continue to build up so that we get a good honey crop into June and the early part of July before the real heat sets in. So that's what we did. Hopefully it works. I did see my queen, which I was excited about, even though that was not the intention. Theoretically, in this situation, the queen is usually on the brood. And so you take the brood frames, put them straight into the new hive, and you have a pretty good likelihood that your queen is actually going to be there. In this case, I got lucky and I actually saw her. Uh, it was a little surprising because she wasn't on brood frames she'd been working on. But anyhow, so... As long as they do what they're supposed to do over there, and those numbers should go back up to that double box because they had plenty of bees when I started and the foragers should be coming back and they'll still be stocking away as we start the actual nectar flow. They'll actually be storing away honey and bee bread because they don't have a whole lot else to do. But when the cap brood emerges, we'll have new queen bees and hopefully that line starts about the same time, the right time that we have that queen return to start laying. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'm sure there will be future 
split episodes to come as I experiment with the ones that are my preferred. And uh, thanks for watching Mac Be Buzzing.